So when I return to Visual Web Developer, what I want to do now is create a web application that can actually then read the what's returned by my web service. I'm going to just create a simple web page. I think it's you know it's a fairly easy thing. I'm using Visual Web Developer, so it really is designed to create web pages. If you were using Visual Studio, um, Visual Studio um, C Sharp Express Edition or Visual Basic Express Edition, you'd be creating a Windows application that could consume the web service. But I'm going to do um, the Visual Web Developer, so I'm going to create a web page. So what I'm going to do is to add, I'm going to do a new, go new file. I get all of the cho choices, and what I want to do is create a web form because that's going to be a web page that includes code. And I want to make sure that I place the code in a separate file um, so that I get the code behind page that shows me how to create the code to connect to the web service. And I'm going to go add. So here it is and it's going to tell me that I've got um, code file is the default.aspx.cs and I've got just a, below this so this is telling me where what kind of code the page is going to use and where I go to look for code. The rest of this really is just a straight HTML page. The only thing that's different about the default page it creates for you from a standard HTML is we've got these words that say run at server and run at server which could potentially allow you to actually um, change the contents of these areas using the code behind page. So I'm going to change the word untitled page to testing web services with three dots. I could do anything I wanted. And what I'm going to do is I'm also going to say, I'm going to give, I want my quote to appear in a heading element so it's going to be big. So I'm going to use H3. Um, you could use any heading element, but I'll go H3. And in order for me to be able to reference this in my code behind page and put the quote in this H3 element, I'm going to have to give it an ID. And I'm going to give it an ID of Q1 or quote 1. And then I'm going to go and I'm going to say run at which will enable me to actually um, run it at the server. Now if I go here and I go view code or if I just click the little plus by the default .apx, ASPX page I can see the code behind page and when I double click on that it has all of the things that you are required to define the basic code page for a code behind page and it's got this one method defined page load and I'm going to put the code that I want behind the code to fill that H3 element with the quote in this section so inside this function. The first thing I need to do though is I need to create a reference to my WIDSL document so what I want to do is I want to go to let's say web I'm going to add a web reference and the web reference is what reference it creates a reference inside your project to the web service. And it's going to pop me up a window and I'm going to make my window smaller so it fits in my whole screen. Now if you're referencing a website, a web service that's not in your current solution, which is what you're usually going to be, is you'll just get the URL of the website the, um, the Witzel document and you'll paste it right there. However, um, I'm going to go and say browse to web services in the solutions and that's the service and that's just a default name I created. So I'll go uh, click the service name and it'll say this is the URL that we're currently browsing. The one thing you will notice is if you come back to this later and the next time you browse it, it might put it on a different port and so you, in order you would have to actually update your web reference in order to be able to access your service because every time you la launch a new browser window uh, every time you test your service quite often it'll essentially test using a different port number so you can have 
35 different ports. And so the next time I test this, it might not be at 1489. It could be at 2232 or something like that. So that can break your reference when you're testing via local host. So once I've got um, my web reference, and I'm, it wants to default call it by the server name. Um, so I could call it my services and I can add a reference and then all of a sudden you see this thing called my services and then it's got the service WIDSL so it imports the WIDSL document um, a disco map which is a, a, a uh, these things are um, uh, um, Microsoft specific so now I want to create when I load the page essentially I want to create a new object of the type of, of the service type and then I want to be able to run the code and there's just a few things you do and it will start typing and if I go my services I see it, it pops up a window and so I'm gonna say okay my services dot service is the name of my service essentially is because I gave it the name my services and it kept the adult default name of service so I'm going to create a default service my services dot service and I'll give it a name Q that's not a very descriptive name and then I'll go equals new my services dot service and I pass nothing to constructor and I do semicolon. Now once I've created that then I can actually get the quote. So I can do what did I call if I look, go back to my default.aspx thing I called this q1 very nice so I can do q1 which is the name of my um, HTML element I want to put my quote into and I can do dot in order to put stuff into it I do dot inner HTML which in HTML land will put the quote that I get back from the service in between the two tags Then I go equals and now I want to get the quote so I go Q which is the name of my service and I'm gonna go and I'm gonna call the get quote method so somewhere in this list I'm going to get quote. I don't pass anything to it, so I just put two parentheses saying I'm not passing any data to it, and I do semicolon. And that's all I have to do. So if I should say, I'm going to save everything, and then I'm going to view default.aspx. I don't compile, I could compile this, I suppose I could build this, and it would tell me if I had any errors in my page. And it says build one succeeded or up to date. So again, um, it looked at my page and says I defined Q1 on the HTML page so it can reference it here and I defined this variable Q and I've, so I've done my code correctly. So now I'm going to do and I'm going to do view in browser and it'll allow me to view this page in the browser so it's popping up the browser. It's loading the page. I'm hoping it works good as it is to inherit a library it's better to collect one so it's in an h3 element so it's kind of bold and a little bit bigger than a paragraph um, that you can't really see that the title that I put on the web page is testing web services up here at the top and if I refresh the page form ever follows function so I could then you know if I was just feeling very excited go back to my definition of my web page and I could add HTML around it like I could say h1 this is just going to be a regular HTML element so I'm not going to give um, it a name I'm going to just say I really like quotes here is a good one and then if I save it and I view it in the browser it's going to pop up another window and it's going to have that text I really like quotes here's a good one high thoughts must have high language 
So that's the end of my demo on how to create a web service using Visual Studio, Visual Web Developer Express.